Sup, chooms? How y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. Well, I didn't think I was going to be back this soon, but we've got to talk about yet another breaking development in the realm of hair loss witchery. And this time, this update is the real deal. That's right, we've got to talk about the extremely preem and optimistic research that just dropped about GT20029, which in case you guys haven't heard yet, is without question the most promising hair loss pharmaceutical currently in the pipeline. So, I have already made several videos about GT20029, which I'll link below, and the last video I did about it was based on the results of the phase one study that was done in China, which yielded very positive results. So to give you a quick overview of what it is though, GT20029 is a protac androgen degrader drug being developed by Kintor, which is a Chinese company that specializes in anti-androgen drugs. To put GT20029 into perspective, it is important to realize that the most effective treatments for androgenic alopecia center around decreasing the harm from the trash hormone DHT and all the damage it does to our hair follicles. Finasteride and dutasteride are effective because they reduce DHT levels in the hair follicles by blocking the 5-alpha reductase enzyme, which converts testosterone into the trash hormone DHT. But there are also drugs that neutralize DHT by blocking the androgen receptors in the hair follicles so that DHT can't stimulate these receptors and cause the downstream effects that shorten the hair growth cycle and cause miniaturization of hair follicles in the scalp. Drugs that do this include Fluoridol and Kintor's own drug, Pyrolutin which I've done several videos on as well. But GT20029 is not like any other anti-androgen drug, meaning it doesn't just block androgen receptors, it is a member of a new class of drugs called PROTAC drugs. GT20029 doesn't inhibit the 5 air enzyme which converts testosterone into the trash hormone DHT, nor does it bind to the androgen receptor to compete with DHT the way an anti-androgen would. No, this treatment outright destroys the androgen receptor on the scalp, making DHT completely irrelevant. It actually tags androgen receptors with a special chemical that marks the receptor for deletion, and then the cell's own cleanup crew does the actual work of destroying the androgen receptors. Just one single molecule of GT20029 can actually tag many androgen receptors for deletion, which means it is a much more potent anti-androgen than traditional androgen blockers, where one molecule can only just block one androgen receptor. For this reason, it is very likely that GT20029 will be even more effective than 5-AR inhibitors, which are currently the strongest treatments we have for fighting hair loss. What is even better, though, is that even if for some reason GT20029 wasn't enough, it could easily be stacked with finasteride and can work synergistically with it since the two treatments have completely different mechanisms of action. You'd also be able to stack it with a growth stimulant like minoxidil, which means that it is very, very likely that even someone with the most extreme form of androgenic alopecia imaginable, like let's say they started balding at the age of 14 or something crazy like that, even someone like that would still be able to completely halt their hair loss with a stack that includes GT20029, if not just GT20029. GT20029 itself. It's literally that good. So I was already very optimistic about GT20029, and I am happy to say that this new data on the compound has only further reinforced my optimism and hope that this will be the greatest hair loss treatment ever invented. So what is this new data? Well, like I said, we already got results from the Chinese Phase 1 study. This time, though, we have the results from the Phase 1 trial done in the good old USA. America! Fuck yeah! So the U.S. Phase 1 study had a similar design to the Chinese study, but it is an even stronger study because it had more subjects. There were 123 subjects versus the 92 subjects in the Chinese Phase 1 study. In this latest study, single doses and multiple doses of GT20029 were given topically for up to 14 days in subjects who have androgenic alopecia or acne, because it's also being researched for that. So most of my fellow hair loss witchers share my optimism about GT20029, but one concern they frequently bring up to my attention is the issue of systemic absorption. Degrading androgen receptors on the scalp sounds great, of course, if you have androgenic alopecia, but you definitely don't want to degrade the androgen receptors all throughout the body unless you want to look like Jason Blaha. 
Well, Chooms, that is why I am pleased to report to you that after single doses of GT20029 were given to the subjects, there was no detectable GT20029 seen in the blood, even when it was measured down to the lowest detectable level of 0.003 nanograms per milliliter. When multiple doses were given over 14 days, the serum concentrations in most subjects were around the lowest detectable level, and the highest recorded level was still just 0.015 nanograms per milliliter. Still a very, very low value. Remember, a nanogram is just one trillionth of a kilogram, so this is all completely negligible. So the report says that GT20029 was safe and well tolerated at all dose levels. There were no adverse effects after single doses of the drug. With multiple doses, the most common side effects were mild dryness, itching, burning, and pain at the application site. However, there were no serious side effects reported at all. No systemic effects that could be due to systemic absorption were reported, so nobody got anything like erectile dysfunction or low libido. Also, this is just speculative on my part, but I think that since GT20029 is an androgen degrader, it is very likely that we'll be able to drop the frequency and dose of the drug after a certain period of time. Androgen receptors do regenerate, but after nuking them with GT20029, I think it is very likely that less frequent use will be viable in order to prevent the recovery of the androgen receptors on the scalp. This would mean that the side effects from frequent use would be even less likely to happen than reported in the study. So, in this report on the study results, the CEO of Kintor commented, quote, the positive U.S. Phase 1 top-line results of GT20029 in 123 subjects has shown a similar result with that of Phase 1 trial in China with 92 subjects enrolled. Both studies have demonstrated the good safety and tolerability in multiple ascending doses of GT20029." Unquote. So, this study was not a study to look at the effectiveness of GT20029, but with now over 200 subjects who have received the drug, and with similar results from both China and the United States, it looks like this drug is well tolerated over the short term. The CEO of Kintor, Dr. Tong, also said in the press release that Kintor plans to accelerate the initiation of the Phase 2 clinical trial, which will look at the efficacy and further look at the safety of the drug, and it could mean we'll get the drug sooner than we expect. So, this is all extremely good news here, Chooms. Kintor is probably better known for developing pyrolutabide, which is further along in development compared to GT20029, and pyrolutabide definitely looks good, but from the data we have about it, there might be more systemic absorption with pyrolutabide than with GT20029, which might limit its effectiveness and utility. So far, though, the research on pyrolutabide has not reported any systemic side effects, and the results on hair cows have been comparable to finasteride and dutasteride. Like I have said, I have done several videos on pyrolutabide that I'll link below if you want the latest information on that particular drug. In general, though, the results for most topical androgen receptor blockers have been a little disappointing, but maybe pyrolutabide will be the exception to the rule. We'll find out soon enough. GT20029, on the other hand, looks to be the real deal here. The only real downside here is that the treatment is still a while off. Most likely, it won't hit the market until after pyrolutabide hits the market, although it's likely that GT20029 may hit the gray market soon via chemical research websites. Anyways, this ProTac technology is very exciting, not just for the treatment of androgenic alopecia, but also for some more serious diseases like cancer. So this is state-of-the-art medicine we're talking about here, Chooms, and I'll be keeping a close eye on this one. I am hoping that the hair loss community will join me in keeping interest for this treatment at an all-time high. After all, if a bro-scientist conspiracy theorist on Reddit can convince virtually everybody that the future of hair loss treatments is broccoli, then hopefully this video will keep the hype behind androgen integrator ProTac attack drugs alive a little while longer while the research continues. I'll certainly be back to cover more news about this exciting drug as new details about it arrive. And yeah, I know I probably should get over the whole broccoli thing. I promise I'm working on it, but until then, I'll be in touch with you all soon. God bless and thank you for watching.